Hi, a very good day to everyone. My name is Sochi Fong. My metric number is 259521. And this is my persuasive speech. So, before I begin, let me tell you a short story. A university student named Gawin has an excellent academic result during his former education life. For instance, he always achieved an excellent cumulative grade price average, or also known as CGPA, for every semester. However, after he graduates, he could not get into his desired company at all, even with the result based on his resume. And in fact, one day, Gavin bumped into one of his former classmates named James. Gavin is so surprised that James is so successful by even opening up his own company. But Gavin, he is just an average worker in a private company. Gavin instantly remembers that James often performed poorly in his academic studies. And yet, how could this happen? And it was that moment Gavin started to question his own life. Where did he go wrong? You may be wondering how could this happen, but in reality, it does. Ever since we are kids, our parents, teachers, and the society taught us to study hard enough in our school so that we could secure a good, so that we can get a good score and secure a good job in the future. And because of that, ever since I started to get into the universities, I tried my best in completing my exams and final examinations so that I, could, I can get a good score on CGPA as well. However, by the time I reached my final year studies, I realized some things. I came to realize that some of my friends whose academic results are poor or worse than me can produce a better project than me. In other words, they are more productive than me. And then I thought, isn't it that more important than just having an excellent CGPA but knowing nothing? Which is why today I would like to persuade each of you that having a good and excellent CGPA does not mean everything in your life. So with that being said, let me begin with my first reason. For your information, no matter how good your academic CGPA result is, it simply does not measure your ability to think outside of the box. Now, the first thing outside of the box can mean we think the way we think briefly, Creatively and freely by not just focusing on a single perspective but overall picture as well, which is an ability that we humans have that gives us major advantage compared with machines. And I sincerely believe that we humans, we every human have the ability to think outside of the box. The only matter is how do we utilize it? Thinking outside of the box can give you an edge over other people because you can be a critical thinker and a problem solver that could be used to apply in real life situations. So, in the modern and average world we are facing right now, I believe this is one of the simple ingredients for you to be successful. Because the world right now is looking for some creators, innovators, pinoyers who have the ability to think, criticize, and analyze rather than just some followers with a three, real nice 3.5 CGPA on their resumes. So, back to the CGPAs. Usually, a student can score their CGPA in university by completing their coursework assessment and final examinations, which is why I said earlier, it does not measure your ability to think outside of the box. Well, it's true that our assignments can come in many forms like report writings, presentations, or even mini projects. However, it's undeniable that some of these work are done with plagiarism by students these days. Because, for instance, with the free accessibility of the internet nowadays, Many students can just get their sources of assignments whenever it's available and who knows, with the little modifications, they will just submit their assignment without even learning anything. Not to mention there are some of the students who just did nothing by being a free rider or passengers within their group work coursework assessment. And while no plagiarism is allowed in the final examinations, it has made students into robots in order to memorize the things that they hate, confused and lack of understandings with a sole purpose of scoring an excellent CGPA on their academic record. So what happened in the end? They learn nothing because the process has become result driven rather than the one we need, knowledge driven. So now that we have talked about the problems of our academic and CGPAs, let's take a closer look into the realities. So here are the few famous names that you may know. We have Bill Gates, Mark Zubers, Steve Jobs, these are very famous and successful people and you must talk, wow, they must have a very good academic CGPA results. Well, I'm here to say that you are wrong. 
Some of the famous people that we know on the internet don't even have a good academic background. According to the research of the annual millennial census done by RELX, which is a firm that provides global wealth information, the study of the global population millionaires shows that nearly 30% of our today world millionaires don't even have a bachelor degree. For instance, we have Steve Jobs, the CEO of Apple Company, Bill Gates, the co-founder of Microsoft Corporation, Alan DeGeneres, one of the best comedians in Hollywood, Mark Zuber, Paul Allen, Larry Ellison, and many much more. So, let's get started. First of all, we have Steve Jobs. Despite dropping out from the Reed College, Steve Jobs later started his own company and he will later go on to become the CEO of Apple Company itself. Meanwhile, Bill Gates dropped out from Harvard University while even finishing his course to pursue his opportunity to make his own company and today, guess what? He is known as the co-founder of Microsoft Corporation. DJRS while studying in the University of New Orleans, however, she dropped out not too long afterward, lasting only one semester to work on various part-time jobs. Later in the 80s, while she performing as a stand-up for comedy clubs, she got on national spotlight attention on Johnny Carson Tonight Shows, and today, she has her own talk show called Allen's. But I'm trying to say this, this just shows getting a good score on your school test, attending the best university like Harvard's, or even having an excellent CGPA does not get into determine who you are. Because many people nowadays believe that these are the rules for you to, success, to be successful in securing a good job, gaining sustainable incomes, making your own futures. Well, I'm not saying that you are wrong and I certainly did not say that you should totally give up or ignore your academic assessments or even draw from college at all. In fact, these are important in your life as well as these are the gateway for you to secure a good job. Yes, what I'm trying to say is Having a good and excellent CGPA are not necessarily the only requirements that you should focus on. What truly really more important is continue to find your own ways, path and experience long even after completing your formal education. So, now that you have seen how successful these people are despite not having any successful background, let us move on to the final points of my speech. True to be told, most of the employers nowadays are looking for skill, qualities, and experience that can be measured by CGPA alone. Little to your information, whether you want to believe it or not, your CGPA is just a grade that you receive in your student life and it does not teach you, let alone determine everything in your life. Also, you may have heard of this phrase before, don't judge a book by its covers. As it suggests, students with top CGPA does not necessarily mean they have greater skill and qualities compared to students whom CGPA are below them. Because most of the students with high CGPA mostly spend their time chasing after the high grade they strive for, thus lacking the time to develop, build, and learn the another much needed life skill. In other words, they don't get as much much in the real life environments. So, for that, you really should try to demonstrate your skill and work, as these are the criteria that most employers are looking for nowadays. Your CGPA that you keep building and chasing often only work as the first requirement when you try to apply for certain jobs or even being considered for an interview. The next thing that the employer thinks most likely to focus on are your fresh graduate skills, our skill instead of our grads only. Of course, the skill that I mean can be complex problem solving, interpersonal skills, creativity, ability to communicate efficiently with other people, and much more. So, why don't you try to learn, build, and develop some relevant life skills for your own experiences instead of chasing only your high grades? This actually will make you more of a complete package that most employers nowadays are looking for. You cannot just simply depend on your CGPA to make it through all of your lives. Try to learn something different to incorporate with your good academic backgrounds. And I assure, if you do so, you will feel more content with your lives. So, from my speech, all of you should have known that having a good and excellent CGPA does not mean everything in your life. In conclusion, my speech right here is not to devalue the CGPAs. Yes, our academic backgrounds are important, 
But remember, our life is not just displaying how good our grades are, but instead, what are the creativity, skill, or work that we can do with our grades. Hopefully, after this, you will focus to learn and look into the different aspects of your life rather than just keep chasing after the CGPA. So, before I end my speech, here is something Bill Gates once said. I am not a university topper, but today, all university toppers are my employees. Think about it. That's all from me. Thank you.